Good morning, Austin Valley. I'm Lyon Clover. And I'm Addie Huff. And welcome back! We hope you had a great Thanksgiving break, but now it's time to get back to work as we finish up the semester. We only have two weeks left until winter break, so let's finish off 2021 strong. This week's spotlight is a special one because it's our own principal, Mrs. Beauty's interview. Let's take a look. My favorite part about work, working at Ralston Valley would probably be um, our students and our staff. Our students are amazing and they're talented and they're kind and um, our staff is probably one of the best um, in the state if not the nation and I know I'm biased but everybody cares for each other and we're very student centered here and so I love going to all the different activities and the athletics and being in classrooms and talking with kids and just watching our teachers um, they're incredible They've, they're so talented a talent that no one knows about um, well I was a college athlete and I played basketball and so I played that from a young age all the way through college but I would say probably it would be that I'm a drummer and when I was in college I played drums and I have a drum set at home and I like to come home and play my drums and um, release some energy and so I don't know if it's really a talent because I'm not very good at them but I very much enjoy it. us apart from other schools in the nation is really um, our faculty and staff. We have probably, I know I'm biased, but we have probably one of the hardest working student-centered faculty and staff. They truly care about students. They truly care about our kids. Um, you see them at all of the activities and the athletics and they are there to support our students a hundred percent. They put in so many hours outside of school to make sure that our students have a positive experience. We are rated one of the top high schools in the state of Colorado and that is because of our faculty and staff. They are truly special. The freshmen work hard this year when it comes to football. Getting onto the football team isn't easy, especially for freshmen who've only been here for this semester. Let's see how they did. We've really become, we went from strangers to becoming somewhat of a family. None of us knew each other at the beginning of the summer. And a bunch of players were coming from different middle schools and it's kind of awkward and quiet at first, but by the end of the season, everybody's dapping everybody up, hugging, you know, and, and we created a lot of good friendships and relationships that are gonna go, you know, into the future and, and past high school. We meet in the locker room and we have a team meeting. And in this team meeting, we have an opportunity to go over any last minute reminders. And we go through all of our different groupings. As football, there are three phases to the game. And within those three phases, there's all kinds of transitions. So we go over every little mental piece before we go outside and warm up because the team that has the mental edge and who's more prepared, the team is gonna be more victorious. My favorite game of the season was versus Lakewood High School. Turns out we played their JV team, and it turns out their JV team included a couple of varsity players. It was a really tough game, but in the very, very end, we came out victorious. It was a tough challenge, but we really demonstrated some, some grit and some determination. As you know, the yearbook is something we've all been interested in. So let's take a look at how they're doing this semester. Well, my full name, Erica Fulton. Mrs. Fulton. <laughs> I teach yearbook and I teach uh, English. Okay, so in yearbook, we're obviously in charge of putting together the yearbook. Um, and that is a year long process. So. Um, er, pretty much every month starting in October, we have deadlines uh, where we uh, generate the pages. Um, and then in May, 
The student body gets the product that we have been working very diligently and very, very hard on all uh, all year. You know, the day to day is you know attending events, it's taking photos, it's writing, um, it's designing. We do a lot of good work with design on those pages, um, and it's talking to people, interviews. Um, and just get a lot of gathering of that information and doing that within within a time budget. Our kind of our I don't know if you call it a motto, but one of the things that we um, talk a lot about is that we're the historians of the school, um, and so being ready to capture not only the year but the stories um, of our students who are here this year. One of the big challenges of yearbook is we do a lot of learning on the job. Like we start producing, we have an, a deadline in October. It's not like we get a chance to teach all of the concepts and all of the skills. We get to do that throughout the year, but we still have to generate that content. We still have to produce the yearbook. And so uh, a lot of learning on the job and learning as we go. And Our hot topic this week is a glass half full or half empty? I would say half full. I'd like to think it's glass half full. Honestly, glass half empty. Glass half full? Glass half full, absolutely. Glass definitely half full. Half full. Half full. I mean, I would say glass half full. Glass half empty. Oh my goodness, um, glass half full. Because it's all about your attitude, right? 90% of life is your attitude. 10% um, of it's what you're given. Um, because it's half full. Because I'm a pessimist. Just to be positive. Because it's half empty. You like live by glass half empty, like, I don't know, you're gonna look at everything negatively probably, so. Why not? Why would you put it empty? Yeah. Like that's so boring. And plus, it's the water that you measure, not the air. Now, as usual, let's end off with Mindful Minute. Passing it off to the counselors. You have all heard that breathing exercises can help calm nerves and relieve stress. But do you know why? Improper breathing can contribute to anxiety, panic attacks, and other physical or emotional distress. Most people aren't really conscious of the way they are breathing, and when people are anxious, they tend to take rapid, shallow breaths that come directly from the chest. The easiest way to determine your breathing pattern is to put one hand on your upper abdomen near the waist and the other in the middle of your chest. As you breathe, notice which hand raises the most. If you're breathing properly, your abdomen should expand and contract with each breath, and the hand on your abdomen should raise the most. Now we are going to practice a simple and easy breathing exercise. Before we get started, make sure that you're seated upright in your chair with your feet flat on the floor. Keep your hands relaxed in your lap with your palms facing up. For this exercise, you will do everything to a count of four. First, start with exhaling all of your air. Now breathe in for a count of four. Hold for four. Exhale for four. Hold for four. And you can repeat this four times or as many times as needed. Thank you for watching RBTV. Two more weeks to go. Have a good weekend.